My name is Osma Suominen, and I'm going to tell you about Anif and Finto AI, how we developed our own solution for automated subject indexing and put it into production use. Uh, in this presentation, I will be describing work that we've to done together with my colleagues Mona Lehtinen and Juho Inkinen. Um, sorry, um, I'm, I'm not able to switch the slides. Okay, thanks. My apologies, Try. Okay, so <clears throat> here's the outline of this talk. I will first talk about uh, the development of ANIF and then continue with uh, quality of automated subject indexing, then a, a little bit about community building, and then uh, about uh, how we've deployed ANIF, uh, and finally finish off with some lessons learned. So first, the development of ANIF. Um, so we know that uh, manual indexing of documents is a very labor-intensive process and it would help to have a tool that would assist us in doing this. So Anif started from uh, asking the question, uh, what if we could use existing metadata, for example, from the discovery service Finna that um, aggregates a lot of metadata from libraries, archives and museums in Finland, and if we could reuse this metadata to help create uh, more and better quality metadata that we could then uh, use to help with search and discovery. And um, <clears throat> the first prototype of ANIF based on this idea uh, was created in 2017. And the technical implementation was very crude, but it got people excited. So we decided to start doing something in this area. So we decided to start development of a new version built on a more solid technical foundation, starting from 2018. And we decided on some goals and principles for the implementation. First of all, it should be multilingual because at our institution, we need support for at least three languages, Finnish, Swedish, and English. Uh, second, it should be independent of the indexing vocabulary because there are several of those in use. Uh, it should support uh, different subject indexing algorithms, especially machine learning algorithms. And fourth, it should have a command line interface, uh, a web user interface, and a REST API that is suitable for integration with other systems. And last but not least, uh, it should be a community-oriented open source project. So not only do we make the code available, but we also encourage others to use it and contribute back like we've done quite successfully with Cosmos. Currently, all the development uh, of ANIF takes place on GitHub. It's also made available as a Python package on PyPI and as Docker images on the Quay.io service. Then a little bit about um, how, how we work with uh, around quality of automated subject indexing. So uh, to find out how well the different algorithms we have work in practice, we needed to collect some data for training and testing. So we collected already indexed documents from various databases and systems and turned them into so-called corpora in a standard structured format. And those corpora, corpora were split into train, validation and test subsets. We had to be careful not to test the algorithms on the same documents that had been used for training them. So once we have done this, we could compare the subjects suggested by the algorithms to uh, subjects assigned by manually, uh, manually by human indexers. So this is called a comparison against the gold standard. This diagram shows how well uh, the different generations of our algorithms and models have performed on the same corpora. And the most recent scores uh, shown here in purple uh, are generally the best. So uh, we know this kind of comparison can be problematic in some cases. For example, if the manually assigned subjects are not of very good quality, but it does give a ballpark estimate of how well each algorithm is doing for different kinds of documents. Another way to measure quality is to have human evaluators rate the suggested subjects. We organized a workshop last year where a room full of librarians were given example documents 
and uh, subjects that were assigned either by humans or by algorithms for those documents and without knowing which is which so in general it turned out that the human assigned subjects got higher scores but the different difference wasn't huge A similar comparison uh, was done recently by the Finnish public broadcast broadcasting company, Ule. Uh, they compared ANIF against a commercial document classification tool called Leiki that they are currently using. For Finnish language news reports, uh, ANIF was rated as slightly better than Leiki. Uh, but for uh, Swedish language uh, news items, uh, it was much better. The most likely explanation for the difference between the languages is that for Swedish language documents, the existing metadata that they used for training ANIF was of better quality than the Finnish one. Since ANIF has been used in some systems uh, for some time already, we have also been able to measure how many of the ANIF suggested subjects are selected into the final metadata by human indexers. Uh, the Yux Institutional Repository uh, of the University of Uvascula started using the ANIF prototype early on. At that time, around one third of the uh, ANIF suggestions were accepted. With the new implementation of ANIF that used better algorithms, this increased to one half. We plan to make more measurements like this in the future. Then some words about um, community building. First of all, we try to make it easy for people to learn about ANIF. We have a nice website uh, called onnif.org with general information and also a form that can be used to test the functionality. On the GitHub project, we have extensive technical documentation in the wiki section. It's also possible to report issues and to contribute changes using pull requests. We have so far received contributions from Finland, the Netherlands, Germany and New Zealand as pull requests. Um, there is also an ONIF users forum on Google Groups uh, where people can ask for help and discuss their experiences. We also use it to announce new releases and ONIF related events. Currently, there are more than 50 subscribers in the group. Please join if you're interested. Together with ZBW, we have also created a hands on tutorial to help people get started using ONIF. We organized a tutorial for the first time at SWID19 in Hamburg as a physical event with 30 people in the room. When the world turned upside down, we decided to turn the tutorial into an online tutorial with videos and exercises suitable for self-study. Interactive support sessions were organized at the DCMI virtual event in September and early October. Tomorrow we will organize a SWIB workshop based on the same materials. All of the tutorial materials are freely available on YouTube and GitHub. So you can take a look even if you're not participating in tomorrow's workshop. Then a little bit about um, how we've deployed ANIF. The first system that started using ANIF for semi-automated indexing in production was the UX repository of the University of Uvascula. They use ONIF to suggest subjects for master's and doctoral thesis uploaded as PDF files by students. So instead of the students having to fill in a blank form for keywords, they get a list of suggestions and they can select the most appropriate subjects from the list. They can also add their own keywords if necessary. This makes the process of submitting a thesis much easier for the students. The National Library of Finland also hosts a large number of DSpace repositories for various institutions. Three of them have started using ANIF this year. The Osuva repository for the University of Vasa, uh, Trepo repository for the University of Tampere, and Theseus, which is a shared repository used by many Finnish universities of applied sciences. The idea is exactly the same as in UX, but the technical implementation is a bit different. Six months ago, we launched Finto AI, an automated subject indexing service that is based on ANIF. It is a companion to the Finto service that we use for publishing vocabularies. Finto AI provides a web form where users can paste in text, as well as a REST API that can be used by other systems. The ANIF REST API has been available for more than three years, but Finto AI turns it into a production service. 
Just this month, we integrated Finto AI with the system used for processing individual electronic deposits that are submitted to uh, us through a web form. The Finto AI used, is used to suggest subjects for uploaded PDF documents, and the selected subjects are then stored with the other metadata into the Melinda Union catalog and our national bibliography. We also collaborate with the book distributor Kirja Valitus, which is a company that handles the logistics of selling both printed books and ebooks. They aggregate metadata about new titles from publishers, curate it, and distribute it to bookshops and libraries. When they receive information about an upcoming new book, they send the description text they get from the publisher to Finto AI and get back uh, suggestions about possible subjects. Their metadata experts then select the most appropriate subjects. This information is then stored in the Melinda Union catalog, which includes the National Bibliography Fennica. So when the National Library of Finland gets information about a new book, it already comes with subject indexing, which means less work for our catalogers and richer metadata, well before the book has been published and copies of it have been deposited at the National Library. Then some lessons learned. First of all, uh, we know subject indexing is hard. There are no hard rules and some of the process is, is inherently subjective. When humans do subject indexing, they can have very different perspectives and they sometimes make mistakes. But these mistakes are still understandable. When algorithms do subject indexing, they often make very silly mistakes, which don't seem to make any sense at all. For example, finding giraffes in pictures when there are no giraffes. In ANIF, algorithms may be used alone or in combinations called ensembles. The ensembles are nearly always better than the individual algorithms, and they make fewer mistakes. About evaluation, well, there is no single best approach, but many complementary perspectives. It's not a good idea to look at just a single measure, such as F1 score. Achieving good quality is a continuous and elusive process that never stops. We have followed a process that started with experimentation and prototypes and moved slowly in small steps towards production use. This has worked very well for us, and we intend to continue working in this way. When we have created an automated subject indexing service like Finto AI, we have found that it's actually quite easy to start using it in, using it in systems like the digital repositories I mentioned before. The technical implementation can be easy, uh, especially if it's open source software like DSpace. But explaining it to the users is the hard part, because users need to know what, where this functionality comes from and what is expected of them. Finally, we have found that collaboration is very valuable. We are doing an EU-funded project together with CSC, the Finnish center for uh, the IT center. Um, their machine learning experts have tested many state-of-the-art text classification algorithms for us. And in particular, they discovered Omikuchi, which is by far the best individual algorithm in ANIF currently. And using this has improved the results a lot. ANIF has also been tested by ULE, uh, the national broadcasting company, and the National Audiovisual Institute, KABI. Also by the National Library of the Netherlands and by ZBW. From them, we have gotten very good insights, suggestions, bug reports, publicity, and in some cases also improvements to the ANIF code base. So we're not just giving the code away, we're also getting a lot back from the community, and we hope to do more of that together in the future. Here you can see the team behind ANIF and uh, some pointers to further information. Thank you, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you, Thank you for that, uh, Osman. We have uh one question that i can see just now no two questions that i can see just now so the first one uh <laughs> the most important question is where do you get these hats uh, 
Uh, but I will move on to a more technical one, which is that will Anif or Finto be added in the future to a new version of Scosmos? Um, uh, we consider them separate tools. So um, both Anif and Scosmos work with um, Scos vocabularies, but they're implemented in different languages. Uh, Anif is Python and uh, Scosmos is PHP, and uh, it's not trivial to integrate them. Uh, so. Um, I, I don't think they will be combined, but they work together on the same data sets. OK. Uh, another question that is, uh, which is, what is the main technical point which makes ANIF perform so much better than the commercial systems uh, in your testing? Is it the ensembles or something else? Well, uh, thank you for your kind words. I, I wouldn't be so certain that it's uh, always better. but. Uh, uh, I think um, we have been able to uh, collect uh, some some very good algorithms. We use MAUI currently, um, which I believe is the some of the same family that is used also in pool party. Same same, um, yeah, related algorithm. And then uh, we use Omikuchi, and then we have the ensembles, which uh, and yeah, like I said, the the combinations can be more powerful than the individual parts. So um, yeah. We've also been able to sort of improve over time because it's a, it's a modular uh, framework where you can plug in new algorithms. So when we found out about Omikuchi from CSC, we integrated that and, and we got a big boost in, a, in the quality. Excellent. All right, so not seeing any further questions just now, I'll say thank you to you, Asma.